National Chairman and the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, the members of the Council of Elders, the National Executive, all comrades here present. I stand on all previous protocols as I share a few words today. Today is the 42nd anniversary of the June 4th uprising and the first time we were spending it without the founder of both the 4th Republic and the National Democratic Congress. It's unfortunate that 42 years after an incident which has made an indelible mark on the history and the psyche of our nation, Ghana, we find ourselves standing here and lamenting about the very same things that resulted in it in the first place. I'd like to commend all the previous speakers for sharing history that a lot of young people are not aware of. And I would like to build on what some of them have said. The heart of the 1992 Constitution seeks to ensure inclusivity, socioeconomic justice, and equal opportunities for all. <coughs> The Constitution was born out of consensus and is meant to result in that consensus development that any nation that seeks to get ahead should have. We must therefore commit not only in words but in actions the desire to address these vices of corruption, of lawlessness, of political interference in the institutions that are meant to maintain our republic, social injustice, and political exclusion. As a nation, are we prepared to allow our security services to maintain their high level of integrity and loyalty to the state rather than to a political party? Can we still boast security services that are there to protect the state. The security and the sustainable development of Ghana must not be undermined by transitions in power from one party to another. Nor must it be sabotaged by the zero-sum game that we are all too familiar with now. It is eating away not just at our body politic, but our nation as a whole. It is long overdue that the manifestos of every political party are to strictly align with the Constitution and the underlying principles and policies of the National Development Planning Commission. Furthermore, any policy change must be based on extensive research rather than populism or political expediency of a political party in anticipation of elections in a four-year cycle policies and their implementations must have longevity and adaptability rather than serve as tick boxes for political parties and their campaigns. Given that we have so many young people in our population and given that we still have more women in Ghana than men, we must engage in real capacity building of our youth, of our women and persons with disability that looks into the future with protection of our environment at the core of it all. And speaking of the environment, the word galamse has become so overused that now we're not really appreciating the gravity of the damage that it's doing to our resources and to future generations. In a country that is resource rich, we have so many water bodies, we have arable land, all of these threaten to be destroyed, depriving us of our very existence because seven people in power have decided that 
the law only applies to others and not to themselves. Giving your vote to a person or to a government is not synonymous with giving away your power. That is why the Constitution ensures that our rights and some of those responsibilities are entrenched in our Constitution. We are not meant to be victims of elections. We must demand accountability we must demand socio-economic justice. We must demand inclusivity and ensure that all the pillars of good governance are respected. And inclusivity is not simply about our creed. It's not simply about our gender. It's about ensuring that whether it's in the recruitment of armed personnel into the services, whether it is about who gets into which school or who gets which job. The Constitution nowhere mentions partisan favoritism or whose family is whom and therefore having access to something more than others. If indeed we're being governed by people who say they understand rule of law in the Constitution, then we must hold them to account by the very same laws that are meant to govern all of us. Not too long ago, and perhaps maybe I just uh, go back to when the PNDC was in power. Some of the people today who are at the forefront of breaking our laws were the very ones pointing fingers at others. And now that they have the power, it looks as though they're not able to stand up to their own ideas. If today we're celebrating June 4th without the man who we've all come to know so closely associated with this. But the principles remain. It is a reminder to all of us that we are mortal, but the principles and values are immortal. The Bible itself talks about how all things will pass away, but the word of God will not. That says something about the word. If the universe was spoken into being, then words matter. And our words must show the actions that we actually live by, those principles and those values. I'm going to give a little quote by C.S. Lewis. And I quote, a chastity or honesty or mercy which yields to danger will be chaste or honest or merciful only on conditions. Pilate was merciful till it became risky, end of quote. Now, more than ever, we must be able to speak truth to power. Because if we do not, we leave room for something that we cannot anticipate, that we do not want. Those amongst us who are old enough to remember the conditions that led to the June 4th uprising have a bigger duty, not only to inform the youth of what happened, but also to hold the government to account and remind them of the slippery slope that led us there in the first place. Today, the commemoration we have today has two sides to it. On the one hand, it is solemn and it reminds us of our fallen heroes, reminds us of the sacrifices, but it's also to remind us of what we need to do to ensure that history does not repeat itself. The June 4th uprising did not happen in a vacuum. No uprising, no revolution happens in a vacuum. You only need to cast your eye to a couple of countries in the sub-region to understand that it is possible for history to repeat itself. Let us be well advised and live up to the principles and values of the revolution and ensure that the sacrifices that were made to build a foundation on which the Fourth Republic, which has now become the longest standing republic since independence, continues to do so. Thank you so very much. And God bless.
thank you so much. I think I can really say that a crop can never give birth to a bed.